And so here we are. It's the week after Easter, and our lessons have taken us to the traditional place to be the week after Easter, to the story of Thomas, called in our age, the doubter. I spend a lot of time defending this guy, doubting Thomas, the man who has become in our culture a symbol of weakness and lack of faith. For Thomas was a pillar of strength compared to the other disciples. When the others were saying, Jesus, don't go to Jerusalem, they want to kill you there, it was Thomas who was saying, let us go forth and die with him. When the other disciples were all huddled in the house with the doors locked for fear of being discovered, it was Thomas who was going out into the storm of those days, doubtless to get the bread and the eggs and the milk that the disciples would need to continue hiding. And there's a lot of evidence to suggest that the unique and ancient Christian church that exists in India was, in fact, founded by this traveling disciple. Think of what Thomas had to do to do that. He had to travel the seas, a risky venture, to say the least. He would have met up with Jewish merchants who were, in fact, living in India at the time, but, of course, who had not invited him. And then he would have had to do the work of founding this church. And this church, it exists even today. Tell me one story of the disciple Andrew after the resurrection. How about the disciple Matthew? How about even John? Yes, they worked to spread the gospel, but compared to the courage of Thomas, homebodies. And yet here we are once again, saying, oh, poor doubting Thomas. But here's another reason why I dislike dismissing this disciple. First, Jesus never actually uses the word doubt with him. The translation should be, do not be without belief, rather believe. And in John, belief in Jesus is not assenting to a, a, a set of facts about Jesus. It's rather having a relationship with Jesus. Jesus is basically saying to Thomas, hey, you know that relationship we used to have before the cross? It's still on, bro. But the second, more important reason I don't like to see Thomas put down is this. Doubt is good. What, Pastor Mike? What? What? Did you see my bumper sticker? It says God said it. I believe it. That settles it. All right, everybody. Deep breath, like we do around here. Ready? Inhale four. One, two, three, four. Hold for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hear me out. Isn't it a little comforting that one of the eleven was hard to convince? Isn't it a little comforting that when Thomas came back from market that day to find the disciples blathering in joy about resurrection, he didn't lose his head? Keep in mind as you answer that this was more than just a slightly unique situation. This had never happened before. One could argue quite effectively that the only sane response Thomas could have made on this day was, I've got to see it myself. You can shake your head at Thomas, but I find him a comfort because I would have been standing there saying the exact same thing. And I find him a comfort because I cannot believe for a second he could have done the heroic, brave things he did later in his life if he did not come to believe in resurrection. And now think about your faith. Think about the journey you are taking with God. Has your faith grown and changed over time? Of course it has. And if you're honest with yourself, you will probably see that your growth in faith has come after times of stress and trouble in your life. Or maybe it's come because you've grown intellectually and you've had to rethink what this whole faith thing is about. If you're honest, you will probably find that your faith changed and grew, became stronger, whatever, because you went through a period of doubt. Without doubt, without questioning, without wonder, there can't be growth in anything, including faith. 
And when we look at Thomas and we readily accept this impression that he, despite all his heroic accomplishments, is somehow less than the other disciples, we say to one another, to those journeying in faith, to those going through doubt, to the whole world that in Christianity there is no room for questioning and doubt. We end up proclaiming precisely the opposite of what I think most of us believe, that a strong faith needs to be a growing faith. Local theologian Derek Melby, you know, Ron and Mary Ann's kid, he once put it this way, shame on me if I ever stop asking the hard questions. When you put down Thomas and shut the door to doubt, well, that's when we begin to stop asking those questions, and that's when we stop growing. And what's more? We reinforce what is a very negative thing in this society, this idea that somehow we should almost intuitively know it all, that we should never change our mind, that somehow changing your mind is a sign of weakness rather than growth. Christ wants us to grow. Christ wants us to question. Doubt is the tool that God uses as we sit on that potter's wheel. Doubt is a tool God uses to shape us into the people God needs us to be. And hey, if we're going to have faith, shouldn't we have enough faith that we believe Christ will lead us through the questions? Shouldn't we be believing that when the time comes for the questions to stop, the Lord of truth will be standing there, ready to welcome us home? Take one last look at something Thomas did. Jesus comes to him saying, okay, here you go, here are the marks, the scars. Don't be without belief. I'm still here with you. Thomas' response is not, wow, Jesus, great to see you. It is my Lord and my God. None of the other disciples made this leap of faith upon seeing Jesus. None of the others put it together that these words Jesus had been saying to them, that I and the Father are one, could be true. Only Thomas, the one who doubted, the one who questioned, the one who was reflective, was capable of making this leap. Don't be afraid of the journey. Explore the mystery of life and God. For though you will truly encounter doubt on this path, you will also find that the world of Christ and of faith is filled with mystery after mystery and wonder after wonder. I believe you will doubtless find more and more reasons to proclaim my Lord and my God.